Last week on the channel, we looked at the absurd story of the Sega Neptune, Sega's bizarre 32X and Mega Drive all-in-one console, a dubious system that was set for release shortly after the Sega 32X and the Sega Saturn itself. This was in a time period where Sega were releasing all sorts of hardware, so in terms of lost devices, the Neptune was not the only casualty of its era when it comes to unreleased systems. I am Lady Decade and today I bring you another tale of Sega system strangeness. This is the story of the Sega Pluto. So, once again, as mentioned in the last video on this channel, Sega went through a phase of naming all of their hardware projects after objects in our solar system. For example, the Game Gear I have here was Project Mercury, and the Nomad was Project Venus. A cool little factoid regarding this relates to Project Saturn, which we know would go on to become the Sega Saturn. But What's really cool was that its arcade hardware counterpart would be known as Project Titan, eventually becoming the Sega Titan Video. I thought this was a particularly nice touch considering that Titan is a moon that orbits Saturn, tying the Sega Saturn's and Titan's relationship cohesively together. Now the Sega Saturn is particularly relevant to today's tale, which we will soon get into, but first we need to go back in time and look at how the Sega Pluto came into the public eye. For this, we need to take a journey back through time to the ancient forgotten era of 2007, when an internet user going by the name of KidVid666 was attending a boot sale in America, or I suppose a flea market swap meet, as I've heard these referred to in other parts of the world. Looking for bargains, this unassuming browser would move from stall to stall looking for a potential bargain. While at this marketplace, KidVid would stumble across an individual selling what appeared to be a Sega Saturn. So he would snap up this Sega system for just one dollar, a bargain for any kind of Sega Saturn at any point in history. What KidVid noticed was slightly odd though, was that this system was emblazoned with the Sega Saturn logo, but it looked different to any Saturn he had seen before. He didn't think a great deal about it on purchase and just assumed it was a common model he wasn't familiar with. Soon though, it would unfold that KidVid had stumbled across one of the most significant video game related finds in the history of game hunting, as it would later transpire that the device that he had in his hands was the long lost Project Pluto. But how this became apparent we will get to explore, so let's look at what happened next. Six years on in 2013, KidVid would decide to upload a video to YouTube to show other users the strange Sega Saturn that he owned, explaining he wasn't really sure what it was and simply held on to it for that long on that basis. While it was obviously a variation of the Saturn due to the logo on top, he didn't know anything else. In the video, he demonstrates that it fully functions as a Saturn, but due to not knowing what it was, some speculated it was a bootleg Sega Saturn designed for the Japanese market. However, he knew it couldn't be the case as the system would only run American games. In the video, he notes that he was considering sticking it on eBay to try his luck. So what even was this device? The console itself is very heavy, weighing in at just under half a stone, featuring a top-loading disk drive, a flip lid, as well as a cartridge slot for memory like a regular Saturn. Project Pluto was pretty much the Sega Saturn II, an update of the original model similar to when Sega would release the Mega Drive and Master System 2s. However, the Pluto offered more bells and whistles than a simple form factor change. The main difference between the Sega Pluto and the Sega Saturn is that this came with an inbuilt netlink allowing for the perusal of websites, much like the Sega Dreamcast that was released years later. With the original version of the Saturn, a netlink could be added via an add-on, however, for the Pluto it was built in. If the Pluto had seen a release, it would have been the first game console ever with a built-in modem, making it a pretty historic device. It isn't really known, but may be inferred, that the five games that were previously compatible with the Netlink potentially could have been played online on the Pluto 2. These games included Daytona USA, 
Duke Nukem 3D, Virtual On, Saturn Bomberman, and Sega Rally. So that's what the Sega Pluto was, but how could we verify that this thing was for real? Well, fortunately, that question appears to have been answered too. Way back in 1995 at E3 of that year, Sega would display two functioning prototypes of this mysterious Saturn model, as well as showing off a few resin mock-ups. However, as we know, the device would clearly never make it to the market, with no reason given as to why. But Dreamcast development would obviously be a likely reason. An unknown Sega employee would go on to leak more information on this device on the internet forum known as Assembler, and this fella is rumoured to be the same gentleman who leaked Sonic Crackers. But one thing that was certainly made clear from all of this was that KidVid666 had something pretty special in his hands. The next chapter in the Pluto saga would occur in 2015, where more controversy would unfold. On Game Gavel, he would list the mysterious Sega console for sale with bids starting at just $1. However, he would purposefully set a stupidly high reserve so that it wouldn't actually sell. KidVid claims the purpose of this was so that he could attempt to be able to gauge the value of the item. But this would not stop many internet users becoming triggered for what they viewed as being an audacious move that would artificially inflate this unique console's value. Now let's be honest, if you had a unique item that you wanted to sell and there was no other way of being able to find out the value of the item, what would you do? Was such a move really that nefarious? I'll let you decide, but one thing is for sure, there were a lot of nerds outraged on the internet over this. Now on Game Gavel, online sources indicate the auction had finished at approximately $7,600. This means the reserve would have been even higher. So some users were angry that KidVid was not willing to let the console go at what they saw as a rather handsome offer. So by this point, they were looking at him as greedy. If this was not enough to garner the wrath of the internet game collecting community, then the fact that this was not a one-off incident would not help the situation as shortly after KidVid would list the device for sale on eBay with the listing finishing at $15,000 with no sale being made. By this point, many people looked at KidVid as a bona fide internet villain. Regarding the eBay listing, KidVid666 is alleged to have said that the reason no sale went through was because the buyer had to back out and the rest of the bidders who had made offers were given a second chance to win the console. But coincidentally, none of them would agree to make the purchase either. This indicates that there was likely a fair share of jealous eBay trolling going on, much like what happened to professional eBayer and content creator Nick Hill when he tried to sell his N64 developer cart of WWF No Mercy, which I recently made a video on. KidVid went on to further state that he just wanted the best possible price for it, as he wanted to give the money to his parents. Past this point, years would go by with the Pluto sitting unsold amongst KidVid's collection, with the whole experience of trying to find a buyer leaving a sour taste in his mouth. Things would go quiet on the Sega Pluto front for quite some time, with little in the way of new news breaking. But this would all change in 2020, when KidVid, accompanied by Adam Korolik, would show up on Ben Heck's YouTube channel with the Sega Pluto in tow. It is revealed that the Pluto in question has a few issues, such as the lid no longer closing. So in the video, Ben Heck opens the system up, inspects its innards, and performs minor repairs in order to restore this prototype to its former glory. If you could consider a cancelled prototype having any glory to begin with. Also in this video, Korolik notes that at one point in time, there was actually six Plutos in existence. One is in Japan, one is obviously the subject of today's video, and the other four being reportedly destroyed completely, meaning there are now only two Plutos in existence in the world. In the crazy year that was 2020, a pandemic was not the only insane event that unfolded as KidVid managed to successfully sell the Pluto to an anonymous buyer for the whopping figure of $84,000. 
And I guess why on earth not? Considering how few of these exist. Due to the anonymity of the sale, I cannot find anything online with regards to who exactly now owns the Sega Pluto, but in my opinion, I do feel it's a bit sad that something like this appears to have just gone into a private collection behind closed doors, as something like this belongs in a museum rather than simply in the hands of the filthy rich. But at the very least, Kidvid did allow Ben Heck to open it up for our viewing pleasure before the sale. So at least the world got to see the system in its most intimate form. So Ben Heck's video is great for historical purposes. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new here then my last video was about the Sega Neptune which I reckon you'll like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and please remember to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on my future videos. I feel more inspired than ever to keep creating content in part thanks to the generous people who are supporting me over on Patreon. So I would like to personally thank House of the Ted, Ben Harradine, Green Cooper, Gaspar Heller, Instant Gratification Monkey and the rest of all of my lovely supporters. Thank you very much.